Hi. So today we've come to Scormore Cemetery in Bradford uh, to see a grave of a particular gentleman called James Berry. Now James, let's go watch where I'm going so I don't trip over, was born in February 1852 in a place called Heckmondwijk in West Yorkshire in England. Now, <clears throat> he did get a job later in life as a police officer in Bradford. Um, there's a really nice Bradford police station which I think he would have gone to. So I'll put a picture of that up. Okay, so behind me is the Milnes and France police station, that building there. Opened in 1871 and it's very likely that he would have worked in that building. So he did that for eight years. While he was doing that, he applied for a job of quite an unusual position. A executioner or hangman, which he carried out. He is credited for... 131 hangings however he did feel that six of those people were not guilty he brought this to his managers head honchos in the home office and they said 6 12 what it does it matter basically it doesn't concern you do your job uh, he had an issue with that and he pretty much soon left. Now he is credited for perfecting something called the long drop. When people are hung and they go through the gate or well, the trap door that they stood on is calculated to the height of the person, the weight of the person and also the position of the noose. Before he came along people were just putting it in on and you would get all sorts of results from people taking a long time to choke to death and hang right to the other end where the heads would come off now for him this is not humane although no killing is humane arguably so he calculated height weight position at rope, all that kind of stuff so that these people wouldn't suffer when they were hung and that's basically his calculations were uh, used for the rest of the hangings in the UK. They were just hang hanging people, no ca just hoping for the best for the hundreds of years before then and this fellow was having none of it. So after he left became an executioner he um, became disillusioned with the job it sent him out of control spiralling to drink and he was rescued as he puts it by the word of God he became um, somebody who became a strong advocate to support the abolition of hanging and he continued that for the rest of his life he was also the first executioner that could read and write and he was the first executioner to write some books which he should read about his experiences as an executioner. Now we never liked the term hangman. It didn't sound professional so he insisted he was called an executioner. So many of his residences don't exist anymore. A mission where he used to preach at in Bradford, that still exists. 
and that was where he preached. Okay, so behind me you can see the building, which is the mission of where James preached. It's good to see it still standing. What we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll get some shots of that. He also tried to tour America against ex public executions. Well, not public, but executions, which fell on deaf ears, as we know. They're still executing in many states in America. And for all that this gentleman achieved, his grave is absolutely in disarray. I will show you it. I, I can show you it behind me. I've had to snap some tree branches down to even see the headstone, which is on the floor. It's not even a grand headstone. After the, when I've done this, we'll go around and I'll show you some of the headstones in this cemetery. Mainly because a lot of these people were wealthy. Bradford was one of the wealthiest areas in the country during uh, the Industrial Revolution time. Hence a lot of posh headstones. So James is down there behind me, literally in that bush. You can see where I've snapped some away, and that's where he is. So what we'll do now is, we'll go in, we'll have a look at the headstone. It is completely tipped over, his wife is here as well. Um, he did die in Bradford. Uh, I believe it was Walnut Farm, and that building still exists today. And this is what it looks like now. So behind me is the house where James Berry died, uh, Walnut Farm, on the, I think it was the 21st of October 1913. Uh, if I do a pan around, you can have a look around. As you can see, everything around me is pretty new. This would have been a, a farm out here, all on its own. I've looked at the maps. It was a farm out here, all on its own. Uh, it would have been quite a pri private and nice place to live. It's a fair way from the cemetery, and you've got to remember this is a place of high industry. Uh, the motor car would have been coming of age. Horses and carts would have been prevalent everywhere and I think it would have been a nice place for him. So let's have a look at James's last and final resting place and pay our respects. As you can see it's deeply overgrown. You'll probably not even be able to work anything out from here. I've pulled some branches away there's parts of headstone down there. I'll lift things out of the way so that we can see. This is his wife Sarah that I've got my foot on to try and hold the branches out of the way. This is Sarah. Oh, this is James in loving memory of Sarah, and that's his wife down there next to him. Um, if we go in there, look, you can see this just absolutely in disarray. 
Now the town of Heckmondwijk has got a plaque up to this fella, being proud of him and for what he did. And yet, this is the state of the grave in reality. Uh, let's just have a moment for him.